a group of 9-11 family members um, are also trying to bring civil lawsuits. Um, and so far, and, and I am not an expert on how these suits are proceeding. They, they've actually gotten bogged down in some fairly internecine arguments between lawyers, um, which is another problem, I guess, with lawsuits. But um, one problem is that the, the government, our government, is not allowing full discovery, um, which, of course, would be one of the major goals of this lawsuit. It's, it's, it's to discover. And you know, some of this money gets traced through our country. And so it's, it's a very hard problem. But um, it seems to me to be the most obvious uh, nonviolent way to make a big difference really quickly and uh, something I want to continue to, to work for. We've only ever come together only for the purpose of coming together once. Otherwise, we find ourselves together because we're lobbying Congress or because we're at a peace march or because we've, we've come together for um, the peace vigil on, in September 10th, for example, in New York, which brought you know, seven or eight of us together. But we're so new, and we really haven't had that much time to spend time together. So I think we have a lot of, of things still to be, to be built and planned. Um, there's, I think there's always a lot of time of support and communion um, with each other. Uh, and it doesn't happen within any one religious tradition. Um, we had a retreat that was held at the Peace Abbey in Sherburne, Massachusetts. The Peace Abbey is an interfaith center devoted to um, furthering peace and especially to recognizing the civilian, civilian victims of war. Uh, and a lot of that time was spent in, um, in healing ceremonies. But um, I think each of us brings our spiritual tradition and we respect that member to member. We've been able to collect um, many thousands of dollars of, of money through, through the, the Friends of September 11th, uh, our members who are sort of associate members, and we have been able to supply some aid to people. We've also been able to arrange, uh, especially for some children, to get transported out of Afghanistan and get medical attention that they needed um, in hospitals, mostly in Europe. Uh, but the really hard work is to actually get a civilian victims' compensation bill passed through Congress. Um, it was being discussed. We, we've, circu we've lobbied and organized to get a Dear Colleague letter circulated among the members of Congress. We have 40 signatures so far on that letter. We continue to lobby and to talk to people. And after the congressional elections, we plan to go back and talk to more congressmen about um, backing this effort, but it's, it's, it's going to be uh, a struggle. And we are very much afraid that if war starts in Iraq, that that will eclipse uh, the very important discussion that was going on about what the reconstruction of Afghanistan should look like and how our nation would participate in it. So, People can, can, people can understand the argument that terrorism is not a country and that when you strike, when you try to bomb people to end terrorism, the potential for giving birth to more terrorism is very real. And I think that argument is something that can be persuasive when other arguments to just love your fellow man may kind of, you know, go over people's heads as they think about America's might or the need for revenge. We're very aware of a moral authority that we have at the moment, and so sometimes I think we have been able to preach to people, you know, who, who may not quite be um, 
with us. The other thing I feel like um, right now, you know, as we are so clearly contemplating and, and I think almost unavoidably on the path to war in Iraq, just for all of us peace groups to be better organized um, and to, I, mean, I think we already are better organized than we were during the Vietnam era. Um, so I would say, you know, talk to young people um, because we have so much to teach them, those of us who lived through the 60s. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.